experiences from around the world. I am in the middle of a journey that began five days ago from Athens. I've traveled 1,455 kilometers, passed through Sofia, Bucharest, Brasov, and now heading southwest to follow the trail of Dracula. The goal for today is to ride one of the most famous streets of Europe, Trasfagarasan. I feel great that I will ride this pass. Moreover, the reason one becomes a motorcyclist is because we enjoy road trips, riding, and getting a more intimate view of the surrounding environment which being on a bike offers. And although all the cities I've visited up to now are very beautiful, I have to say that unfortunately I haven't enjoyed the riding yet. My first stop will be in Bran, just 29 kilometers southwest of Brasov. Bran is a touristic village with many visitors because of the castle, which is a national monument, and due to the fact that it borders Transylvania and Vlachia. It is often referred to as Dracula's castle, but there is no evidence that there is any relation to Vlad Zepis. The village has lots of traffic and is very noisy. It was even difficult for me to find a place to park my bike. In the center, there is a bazaar where you can explore, and of course the castle. But if you really want to visit it, you'll have to wait in a huge line for at least an hour. The castle was really impressive and I would have liked to see it, but I didn't feel like getting burnt in the sun. Moreover, my main priority was getting to Trasfagarasan, which was 107 kilometers away. After not even an hour of exploring Bran, I headed off to Curtea de Arges, where from there I will take the 7C, or the Trasfagarasan, in order to cross the Carpathian Mountains. I checked Google Maps and I'm surprised by the fact that for 107 kilometers I will need 2 hours and 15 minutes. Therefore, I can assume that the road won't be that good. I continue south on a road with one lane per direction and with many curves. In a few parts there's very little traffic and the road surface is not very good. And although the route is interesting, it's a very exhausting ride. You must be careful in general when driving or riding, as animals, like cows, may appear in the middle of the road. This section reminds me of the Alps due to the houses with sloping roofs, such as those found in the mountains of Central Europe. The scenery here is beautiful and I really enjoy it. My plan is to stop at the real Dracula's castle at the entrance of Trafagarasan, and then spend the night in Sibiu. It's worth mentioning that behind the literary vampire Dracula, who drank the blood of living people, there was a man named Vlad Tepes the Impaler. Born in 1431 in Transylvania, he is referred to as an extremely unbalanced person with strange ideas and habits. He earned the nickname the Impaler because he hated the Turks and therefore he impaled them after each victory. The story is interesting and is worth reading about. More information can be found on Fritman.net. The scenery along the route is very beautiful, but the asphalt is bad and really tires you out, and you better hope you don't come across any trucks. It is very hot, which is bothering me, but I continue on my way, wanting to make my next stop at Dracula's castle. While descending the mountain, I pass by several horse-drawn carriages that you see often in Romania. I pass the mountain and arrive at Valea Mare. For a few kilometers more I continue riding on flat landscape. In this area you will see many more horse-drawn carriages on the road. At one point I turned left to head towards Curtea de Arges, and unfortunately the road became really crappy. The least I can say is that it was an awful and tedious ride. The problem is that I have to continue like this for many more kilometers, and it gets even worse behind the trucks and buses. I started to get nervous though because the sky was very cloudy in the direction I was headed. A 
Along the way I saw many carriages and was surprised by the amount of stuff they had loaded on. It's almost 2 o'clock. I'm already getting tired. The landscape is uninteresting, the road is still a mess, the weather seems like it's going to rain, and I'm on the verge of getting really despaired. I arrive at Curtea de Argas, where I make a stop to exchange money and stretch out a bit. That's when it started raining. I remember myself being pissed off in a shed, talking on the phone with a friend who had done the same route about my problems. He told me to relax because from here starts the best phase of the trip. So I put on my waterproof clothes and I head off again, not wanting to waste more time. I move north, unconvinced by my friend about what he said. But boy was he right. So I continue on this boring landscape when far away I start to see the Carpathian Mountains. A few kilometers down to my right, I see the magical sign that says Trasfagarasan and head up the mountain. A few kilometers further on, at a point that you can't miss because of the many parked motorcycles, is the starting point for the hike up to the real castle of Dracula. As I was tired, and because of the drizzle, I decided not to climb up, so I just made a stop for lunch. From here, I have to ride more than 150 rather difficult kilometers to Sibiu, where there I will spend the night. So, after an hour's rest, I hit the road again. You can't be a motorcyclist traveler and not have heard about Trasfagarasan. It's named after the fact that it crosses Mount Fagaras of the Carpathians, and it's the second highest paved road in Romania after Transalpina. Continuing north for a few kilometers, you will find the Vidraru Dam, which is a hot spot for taking photos as the scenery there is very beautiful. On your left side, exiting the tunnel, there is a canteen where you can get something to eat. If it fits your program and you wish to stay in the area, shortly after the dam you will also find a nice hotel. This road was constructed between 1970 and 1974 by Nikolai Ceausescu. It was used exclusively as a military route to connect the regions of Transylvania and Vlachia because after the Soviet Union's attack on Czechoslovakia in 1968, Ceausescu wanted to ensure quick military access to all the mountains in case of invasion. Trasvagarasan ascends from an altitude of 2,042 meters and is an enticing route for drivers and riders. I don't know if I had a predisposition and wanted to experience it so, but I felt that the mountain had a magical energy, as I would be feeling tired and then suddenly feel refreshed and relaxed and able to really enjoy every kilometer of the ride. The flora surrounding me is incredible and on the way I also saw many other motorcyclists and cyclists. The weather is cloudy and at one point it started to drizzle. The road is usually closed from late October until late June due to the snow. Several kilometers down, the sun appeared, revealing the beautiful colors that surround me. So I make a stop to take off my waterproof gear that I had been wearing since Curitea de Arques. continue on and soon find myself in an alpine scenery, which really fascinated me. It is one of the most beautiful parts I have seen so far.
here I will make a stop without knowing exactly what I will find, because I see people in many parked cars. There is a small waterfall, so I take my camera with me to take a few shots. The scenery is spectacular, as the road above looks as though it's trying to climb up the mountain. From this point on, I kept stopping as I wanted to enjoy and capture every inch of this area. It's not a coincidence that you see parked cars and motorcycles with people admiring the view at every turn. Continuing on, I arrive just below the top, where I enter a tunnel that leads to the other side of the mountain, the most famous and cosmopolitan side of Trasfagara San. Here you can buy souvenirs, dine, or have a coffee. There is also a cable car here, and the road looks like a ribbon that was thrown randomly and happened to land that way. Although the sun has fallen, and I don't have the desired contrast, the scenery is still very impressive. I start to descend the mountain slowly and feel that I'm resonating with the energy of the mountain. It's so beautiful and I'm really enjoying it here. All the fatigue from my five day journey has magically disappeared. At one point, furs begin to appear around me until I descend the mountain and reach the plain. My destination is now Sibiu, where I will stay the night. From here it is approximately 50 kilometers away and the landscape is flat until I arrive at my destination. As I was exiting a village, the police stopped me because I illegally overtook a truck. Other than for safety reasons, you need to be careful how you drive because the police are not very lenient. The road leading to Sibiu is very good with two lanes in each direction. After a really long day, I arrived in the city. With the help of my iPhone's GPS, I found the hotel, which wasn't exactly the best one I stayed in during my road trip. All I'll say is that it was in a good location. More information can be found at tripman.net. My first taste of Sibiu was at night. It is a very beautiful touristic town with many shops and lots of people walking about. It has 147,000 inhabitants and it is considered one of the most picturesque cities in Romania as it maintains its medieval elements. The first historical reference to the city was in 1192 where it is mentioned that the city was most likely founded by Germans in Transylvania. The German name of the city was Kermanstadt, and from 1692 to 1791 it was the capital of Transylvania. The center of Sibiu includes many preserved buildings, and even the medieval fortification and its towers are in good condition. The city has two major museums. The Open Air Ethnographic Museum comprised of 340 buildings and the Brukenthal Art Museum, which displays the work of many important artists. In 2007, Sibiu was named the European Capital of Culture together with Luxembourg, hosting more than 2,000 events. It is a city with lush greenery that really pulls you in to explore it. I also tried a traditional pretzel, as the smell of them made me unable to resist. Enjoying a coffee on the main pedestrian street is something you definitely have to do. If you like walking, even the non-tourist areas of the city are definitely worth checking out. Like the rest of the city, there are nicely preserved, brightly colored buildings. In the south part of the city, there's a bazaar, and just further down, a not-so-clean river where some locals were fishing.
It's 11.30 a.m. and I leave my hotel to continue my journey. Cebu is the most distant city on my road trip. From this point on, I'll be moving south on the Transalpina Road, making my way back to Greece. 